It started back last fall. It uh, started raining and uh, when we had crop in the field from last year and it hasn't stopped since. You know, when the rain came and seemed like from uh, Halloween to the middle of November, we had rain, fog, ice fog, and a snow. Kept getting rains and having just small windows to work with and not being able to do any type of fall tillage. So we either wouldn't have this problem where we're having to rebed old stuff or the problems we had this spring. Uh, you get something ready to go and think it's it's right and then a four or five inch rain comes through and washes everything away and you get to start over. Well the biggest challenge is we, f we feed in the pastures, we unroll our hay and feed on the ground and uh, the biggest challenge is finding a dry place to do that. We've got rain chances eight out of the next ten days and uh, you know we're, we're at a time that it's getting critical. The field behind me should be planted in corn and be about this tall. But we have a silent disaster building here on my farm. We have received 43 inches of rain in the last five months. Our normal rainfall for the year is about 50 inches. The, the rains have us really far behind anyway. I haven't even planted a soybean. Um, I know several people have plant, planted a little bit but there's not very much acreage planted. There's some corn that's been planted around but this rain's not been good for it but it could, it could delay our, our planting soybeans way on into June. We, we're pretty much on a month delay, and uh, some of that's from the rain, some of it's from the rough harvest of 2018 that left us so many ruts that we had to deal with. We've experienced mostly just excessive rainfall. We've had too much rain all spring long. Uh, it's delayed the planting of a lot of crops. The later we plant, obviously our yield decreases and at some point in time it's not worth planting. In fact, there'll probably be acreage here in these river bottoms that are not planted at all. It all started last year and I'll never forget, we got rain in August and everybody was happy singing glory, hallelujah. We can turn the wells off, no more poly piping. When we got the rain in August of last year, it never quit. Myself and President Randy Veach and Matt King uh, are all in Washington today and tomorrow uh, to talk to our whole delegation about the problems that we're having in Arkansas. And we've explained to them what situation we're in with agriculture and dealing with all of agriculture and the trade wars and the weather that we've had and they understand that. They understand that we need some help and uh, that they're going to work at doing everything that they can so that they can help get, keep us in business and hopefully that we can get some results out of this. We're now, what, seven years into a market decline, and that's a problem. We, you know, these trade deals actually yield positive results for the taxpayers in that we will see the markets move a little more and we can get rid of some of this, these crops that are keeping prices depressed. Well, our row crop farmers have had a couple of bad years on price and weather, either conditions to try to get in the ground or conditions of trying to get out of the ground for harvest. It's been frustrating because price has been down, ag income's been down. And so this fight with China and the impact, particularly in soybean prices for the United States, has been aggravating to a lot of farmers, frustrating, and cost a lot of our farmers a lot of money. Lucky for us, we had 20 acres of corn planted. We had all the fields prepped. We were fixing to start planting more. Uh, so input wise, we only lost 20 acres of corn. We're looking at not having a crop at all this year. Uh, it may be a month at least until we can get back in the fields. And at those dates, I don't, I don't see a crop getting put in the ground this year. Well, this is a flood and not a flash flood. And I'll, I'll say flash flooding is rainfall that falls here that we have to deal with. That's really what we're set up to deal with. Uh, the levee system and all the control structures that keep the river in its banks or in its proximity to where we, where we think it needs to be um, are going to be tested. Well, we knew this water was coming and we had a good hay cutting over there and we was forcing it to get over there and we cut and bailed and hauled. Everybody got together and as soon as the baler was dumping them out we had people on trailers and we hauled them. Of course, we stacked them around our barn over there thinking we'd be great. 
And then, you know, they went to talking, the levee may be unsafe, and that's the only hay we may have had to feed these cattle for a while. So we loaded it up again and carried it to higher ground again, so. Something I get emotional about. Uh, you know, the fact that you could, the fact that we could lose it, you know, everything we've worked for, uh, for 40 years in, in just a matter of days. This is the third major flood in, since 2015. Uh, we saw levels of 280 in 15, 282 in 2016, and we're looking at 285 plus here in 2019. When the river, it just keeps coming up, it's supposed to crest Friday, and it's supposed to crest at a little over 37 feet. The record here is 34.1. So we're, this is a record crest. This is a flood that we've never seen before, potentially. And so it's, a, it's hard to put a number on how many acres it could affect uh, that's, uh, not, you know, that's, not by, that's not protected by a levy. The biggest fear now is how long the river will stay high. And at, uh, at this point, they're talking about it staying above flood stage for nearly a month. Thus putting more pressure on the levee system and especially putting pressure on these, uh, these, I guess these, what we call these sore spots in the levee. Knowing what to do afterwards is going to be, a, a, like I said, just an evaluation when the water gets off and being able to determine, well, are we gonna have to start over? You know, what some things are we gonna have to do in order to get our ground back up into shape? That's, that's what's troublesome, because the ground, there's silt on it, trash, and uh, all kinds of junk. Well, it'll be tough, uh, but you gotta have faith and you gotta have confidence in yourself and just hope for the best. Uh, we're gonna get up every day, hopefully, and, and work and plan and scheme, and when the weather changes, we're gonna change with the weather. It's tough. To this so three times in the last five years, but there's there's no other choice. You just will do what we can do and when plant what we can plant and hope for the best. That's just that's the way it is. I guess it just runs in my blood and it runs in every farmer's blood. I'm a fourth generation farmer. My son is coming after me. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm farming and fighting more for him than I am for myself. Basically, that, that, that farming, that farming intuition, that farming spirit, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure ways, we'll figure ways to bounce back. You know, this is, they always say nothing lasts forever. So, you know, once the water recedes and, you know, the farmers will work up another game plan to see how we can challenge it again. You know what, it, it is a challenge and a lot of times I, I try not to be negative. Uh, I try to think of the positive. Uh, but it does get trying at times, and uh, I, I hope that financially we can withstand another hit like this. You know, if you're a farmer, it's different every day, and it's surely different every year. And this has just been one of those years that just hadn't clicked like uh, we wished it would have. But there's opportunity still for us to come out with a decent crop. If we get all the political stuff worked out, we can do the farming. I just have to keep going. I mean, that's part of the challenges. It's, it's not supposed to be easy. Farming's a, farming is a gamble. I, I mean, every bit of it is a gamble. You plant something hoping for a rain or not too much rain. It, in, in this instance, we've got too much rain. But uh, it's a gamble and that, that's what makes it tough, but that's what makes it fun.